Welcome to this lecture, we will discuss the likelihood and the deviance of a Poisson regression model. We will use just a simple data set to see how these measures are calculated. To illustrate how the deviance and the likelihood are calculated, we will here use our previous example data on the number of metastatic lymph nodes observed in 8 cancer patients on two different treatments. For example, this patient is on treatment A and has 7 metastatic lymph nodes. And this patient is also on treatment A but has 2 metastatic lymph nodes. Whereas this patient is on treatment B and has 3 metastatic lymph nodes. In this example, the patients on treatment A are coded as zeros and the patients on treatment B are coded as ones. The following Poisson regression model was fitted to the data. The variable treatment can only take the values 1 or 0. If the treatment is set to 0, the model represents the expected log count of group A. And if treatment is set to 1, the model represents the expected log count of group B. By using Poisson regression, the parameter B0 was estimated to 1.447 and B1 was estimated to negative 1.224. Remember that e to the power B0 corresponds to the expected count of our baseline group where all the explanatory variables are set to 0. e to the power B0 therefore corresponds to the expected count of metastatic lymph nodes for the ones on treatment A. In contrast, e to the power B0 plus B1 results in an expected count of 1.25, which corresponds to the average count of metastatic lymph nodes for the patients on treatment B. We'll now have a look at the so-called deviance that is commonly reported for generalized linear models. The deviance is used as a measure of how well a GLM model fits to the data, similar as how the sum of squared residuals is used in linear regression. The null deviance is the deviance of a model which has no explanatory variables and therefore includes only an intercept. The residual deviance is the deviance of our proposed model, including our explanatory variables. A double L in these two equations denotes the log likelihoods. The calculation of the null deviance involves the difference in log likelihoods between the saturated model and the null model, whereas the residual deviance involves the difference in log likelihoods between the saturated model and the proposed model. To calculate the deviance, we therefore first need to know how to calculate the log likelihood of the models. Remember that the Poisson probability mass function looks like this. We can use it to calculate the probability of observing k counts based on lambda, which is the mean count. The likelihood is calculated as the product of all the individual probabilities based on our Poisson regression model. We'll here first calculate the likelihood based on our proposed model. We'll here use the probability mass function to calculate the probability of observing these eight counts, given our model. As we have seen previously, the expected mean counts in the two groups based on our model are simply the average count in the two groups. For example, the average number of metastatic lymph nodes for the patients on treatment A is 4.25. We'll now use these two mean values as the value of lambda in the probability mass function. For example, the probability of observing 7 metastatic lymph nodes for a patient on treatment A is calculated like this. According to our model, we should set lambda to 4.25 for the data points belonging to group A. And since the data point represents 7 counts, we set k equal to 7. We see that the probability of observing exactly 7 metastatic lymph nodes in group A is about 7%.
Next, we calculate the corresponding probability for this data point. Lambda is still 4.25 because the data point belongs to group A. And since this data point represents four metastatic lymph nodes, K is set to four. We see that the probability of observing four metastatic lymph nodes is about 19.4%. The third data point results in the same probability because this point also represents four metastatic lymph nodes. For the last data point in this group, we set k equal to 2. We see that the probability of observing two metastatic lymph nodes in patients on treatment A is about 12.88%. Note that these values come from a Poisson distribution with a mean of 4.25. We discussed this type of plot in the lecture about the Poisson distribution. The mean of this distribution is 4.25. And the height of these bars represents the probabilities for the given values of k. If k is 2, the probability is about 12.9%. And if k is 4, the probability is about 19.4%. And if k is 7, the probability is about 7%. We'll now calculate the corresponding probabilities for group B. Note that group B has a mean count of 1.25, which means that we now should set lambda to 1.25. To calculate the probability of observing three metastatic lymph nodes in group B, we set k to 3, and lambda to 1.25. Next, we calculate the probability for this data point where we set k to 1. We do the same calculation for the third data point. And finally, for the last data point, we set k equal to 0. To calculate the likelihood, we multiply all our eight probabilities. We therefore plug in all the eight probabilities and do the math. We see that the product of these probabilities is about 0 0.0000012. The problem when calculating the product of these probabilities is that the likelihood gets very small. Imagine if we instead would have 100 data points, then we would have got a super small value. This is one of the reasons why the log likelihood is calculated instead. We see that the log of the likelihood is equal to about negative 13.6. Note that the log likelihood can also be calculated by summing the log of the probabilities. The log likelihood rounded to two decimal places is negative 13.65. To summarize, this is the likelihood and the log likelihood of the proposed model. These estimated values are the ones that result in the maximum likelihood or the maximum log likelihood of the model. Let's say that we were tested a range of different values of B0 between 1 and 1.8 and calculated the log likelihoods exactly as we did previously. For example, if we would set B0 to 1.2 instead of 1.447, the log likelihood would be reduced to about negative 14.1. The Poisson regression model estimates the parameter B0 to 1.447 because with this value the model results in maximum likelihood or maximum log likelihood. We now calculate the corresponding log likelihood of the null model. A null model is a model with no explanatory variables. The null model is therefore basically just a model with an intercept. If you fit the null model to the data, B0 will be estimated to about 1.012. e to the power of 1.012 is equal to 2.75.
this value actually corresponds to the average count of all the data points. Thus, the null model is the model with just a single mean. To calculate the log likelihood of the null model, we calculate the probabilities just as we did before. However, this time we used a single mean of 2.75. We therefore set lambda to 2.75 in all our calculations. For example, when we calculate the probability for this data point, we now use the overall mean of 2.75 instead of the group mean of 4.25. Then we sum the log of these probabilities, which gives us the log likelihood of the null model. We see that the log likelihood of the null model is negative 17.11. We'll now calculate the corresponding log likelihood of the so-called saturated model. A saturated model is a model where each data point has its own parameter. For example, the probability of observing 7 counts when the mean is 7 is about 14.9%. In the saturated model, lambda and k are equal in this example. We like to calculate the probability of observing 7 counts when the mean is 7. The probability of observing 4 counts when the mean count is 4 is about 19.54% and the probability of observing two counts when the mean count is two is about 27%. We do the same calculations for these data points as well. Then we sum the log of the probabilities to get the log likelihood of the saturated model. We see that the log likelihood of the saturated model is negative 9.97. Once we have worked out the log likelihoods of all three models, we are ready to calculate the deviance. The null deviance is two times the log likelihood difference between the saturated and the null model. We see that the null deviance is 14.28. The residual deviance is two times the log likelihood difference between the saturated and the proposed model. We see that the residual deviance is 7.36. A good model should have as low residual deviance as possible relative to the null deviance. In our case, the residual deviance is much lower than the null deviance. We can use either a likelihood ratio test or calculate the ASC value to test if our proposed model provides a significant improvement over the null model. This was the end of this lecture about how we can calculate the likelihood and the deviance. In the next lecture, we'll see how we can use the deviance and the log likelihood to compare models with the likelihood ratio test or by using archaic information criterion.